Good evening, everybody, and thank you for coming to the second night of our weekly presentations for International Fraud Awareness Week. Tonight, we, have, we are honored to have Dr. Bruce DeGrazia, who is a cybersecurity professor at UMGC. He will be giving us a fabulous presentation on election fraud. So, Dr. Bruce DeGrazia, the stage is yours. Thank you. Just want to make sure that uh, everybody can see my screen as I'm sharing. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can see your screen. All right, great. Thank you very much. Yes, my name is Bruce DeGrazia, uh, and I'm a collegiate professor of uh, cybersecurity management and policy at the University of Maryland uh, a Global Campus. And uh, I wanted to say that uh, uh, I have done this particular uh, this particular presentation three times in the past three weeks, and uh, uh, because uh, there seems to be a demand for it, and every time I, uh, I give it, I get a uh, another. Um, uh, I have to add more to it because it's, uh, there are new developments. So uh, uh, let me let me first start out by summarizing what I'm, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, what we really are, what we're really going to talk about the, at the beginning is divided into, into really a, uh, into two parts. The first part is voting machines. I'm going to talk about the history of, uh, of, of, uh, of voting, at least since the 20th century. Um, we'll talk about the types of uh, voting machines, or at least the types of electronic voting machines, and the vulnerabilities of the most commonly used ones. Uh, then the second part, uh, I'm going to talk about some su suggested solutions to uh, voting machines problem. I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, the sort of soft side of uh, uh, of election fraud and election uh, uh, hacking, which is website hacking and social media attacks. Then I want to finish up by really examining whether or not this, we're dealing with a really serious problem or not, and. Then, of course, uh, I welcome all of your questions. In fact, uh, please ask questions during the uh, presentation because I can answer them, you know, right after I finish or while I'm discussing a particular issue, and we don't have to necessarily wait to the end. Uh, if you want to wait to the end, that's fine too. So let me start by telling you a little bit about my background. I'm from Chicago. I grew up in a political family. My father was a campaign manager. Um, and he was what was called an independent Democrat. In those days, Chicago and Cook County were run by the, uh, uh, you know, what was called the, the uh, machine, uh, the Cook County Democratic Party. And uh, if you were not part of the machine, you had no, no role uh, in, in politics. So my father and some, uh, some friends of his uh, started their own group and uh, put up their own candidates against the, the, the Democratic candidates of the machine. They won the, the many fewer than they lost, uh, but they had, some, uh, they had some victories. And my father eventually ended up as uh, deputy governor of Illinois from 1973 to 1977. Uh, I myself have worked campaigns since 1966. Uh, that's not my first uh, first recollection of a political campaign, however. Uh, when I was six years old, in 1960, uh, I begged my parents to wake me up on uh, election night, no matter how late it was, so I could find out the result of the Kennedy election, uh, Kennedy-Nixon election, 1960. Uh, I'm also was a uh, an election judge, a Republican election judge, and not because I was a Republican, but because again, because the uh, uh, all political positions, and that was a political position in Cook County, on the Democratic side were run by the machine. Uh, the only way an independent Democrat could become an election judge was to be a Republican. And since there weren't very many Republicans in, uh, 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 in Cook County, uh, or at least in Chicago, there were uh, plenty of opportunities to be an election judge. So that, uh, uh, that gave me an opportunity to understand how the system worked and also how there could be a lot of little mistakes 
not necessarily big ones, but a lot of little mistakes, which will become relevant when we talk about the, uh, the, the current election. So back when I was an election judge in the early 1970s, in the good old days, you had two ways of voting. You voted with a paper ballot or you voted with a mechanical voting machine. Paper ballot was exactly uh, uh, what it sounded like. It was a long sheet of paper, uh, particularly long sheet of paper when you had local offices. And, uh, uh, and you marked the, uh, the box beside the name of, of your preferred candidate uh, with an X. Had to be an X, couldn't be a check. Couldn't be colored in, uh, couldn't have the X beside the box. Uh, had to be exactly in the center of the box so the vote didn't get counted. Then you had mechanical voting machines. Now these were, uh, uh, I, don't, you know, I don't know if anyone had ever used one of these, but they were uh, oh, about uh, maybe 10 feet, uh, 10 feet or so wide, uh, eight feet tall. You walked into the machine and there was a lever and you pulled that lever and it closed the curtain. Then you had a number of switches in front of you and you flipped the switch to indicate the candidate that you preferred. When you had completed uh, uh, pulling all the switches that you wanted to pull, then you simply pulled the, the lever back again, it opened the curtain and there was a satisfying thunk and you knew you had voted, the, the vote was recorded. At the end of the, uh, uh, after the polls closed, what, uh, what you would do is you would take all the paper ballots and you would sit there and go through them hand by hand, yeah, by hand, checking off who got what votes for, for what. And the, you open, also opened up the voting machine and printed in the voting machine were a number of uh, uh, were totals besides the name of various candidates. And you recorded those numbers on a, an official sheet of paper. You took the uh, paper, piece of paper, put it in an envelope, on uh, a bag, really. You sealed the bag, and that bag was carried to the, uh, uh, to the, the, the county board of elections, head, board of election headquarters. Um, it, it, you also, at the same time, you called in the uh, uh, you called in the numbers to uh, uh, to your uh, your, your local uh, uh, you know, maybe to 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 the uh, the local committeeman or to the local uh, 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 to the county board of elections yourself. So then, when the when the uh, when the, the bag arrived, they could compare what you were telling them with the what's in the bag, etc. The machines didn't often have, you know, they, they didn't often uh, suffer problems. If there was a problem with one of the voting machines, it broke down entirely or it didn't record any votes at all. And you usually knew it. Uh, there was no talk about vote switching or things like that. The, the, uh, uh, the biggest problems happened with, uh, with voting machines were, uh, actual fraud where somebody would go into the voting machine with somebody else, usually the local precinct captain. Um, or we had a case once where the pe people where the number of paper ballots did not match the number of votes in the machine. And again, that's, that wasn't a fraud problem. That was simply somebody who got tired of waiting in line and, and left. Uh, with the paper ballots, of course, it was all about the X. It was wherever the, uh, uh, however the, the uh, uh, box was marked. And if that X was not in within that, within the, uh, the box, then uh, it was, uh, um, uh, it didn't count. And when you had really long, uh, long ballots, and when you're dealing with a city like Chicago, uh, county, something like Cook County, where there are, uh, large numbers of people, you have all these really obscure offices that uh, uh, that uh, all had to be voted on. You know, it's not enough that you voted for the, for the, the, the mayor or the, uh, the, the 
president or the governor or whatever, you also had to vote for the members of the Cook County Board. You had to vote for the president of the Cook County Board separately. You had to vote for the members of the board of the Metropolitan, no, sorry, the trustees of the Metropolitan Sanitary District of Greater Chicago. Now, if you went around and you asked people what the, metro, the trustees of the Metropolitan Sanitary District of Greater Chicago did, I'm sure fewer than one in 10 could tell you. But these were the people that, that were responsible for the uh, wastewater treatment plants and the, uh, uh, and the drinking water plants for, for the, uh, uh, the entire Chicago area. Very important job, but nobody really knew much about them. And uh, uh, so you had, uh, uh, you had lots of people who simply left those blank. Uh, or marked them, you know, just went down the line and checked them, one, two, three, four, five, and those didn't count. And you had to uh, sit there and parse what the uh, which were the actual votes and which ones were so these particular the machines had said the machines and particularly paper ballots had problems in addition there were there was some corruption there was a uh, there was a possibility that the numbers would be filled in uh, incorrectly uh, by uh, uh, by the uh, uh, by the judges and before they were sealed and sent on or there was a mismatch between what was phoned in and what was uh, and the numbers that were uh, uh, that were official, but that didn't happen all that often because there were two Republican judges and two Democratic judges, and they all had to had to observe and agree to what went into that bag. Well, <clears throat> come the turn of the century. And the new word is electronic and computers. So everybody decided that, well, you know, that we have these issues with the, uh, 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 with, the, uh, with the paper ballots and with the voting machines. Why don't we get uh, elect go into electronic voting? It'll be efficient, uh, less possibility that there can be corruption um everything electronic is is new and it's different and it is exciting and of course we're going to do it and there would be less ambiguity about the results uh that being that the the numbers that came out of the machines were transmitted officially to the headquarters you didn't have to open up a machine and copy down numbers so the unofficial numbers and the official numbers were really the same. And by eliminating that middle step, you had a much greater speed of results and you got, uh, uh, you, you knew, uh, you know, the, the, uh, uh, who won the election a lot quicker than uh, you might have otherwise, at least in, in your, your county. Because it wasn't uncommon when I was growing up for a, a vote before a, uh, an office that was at all close not to be decided until sometime uh, uh, the next day. So everybody thought this was a wonderful idea. Let's, uh, let's go make everything electronic. Well, <clears throat> lots of different types of voting machines. And these voting machines uh, uh, ranged from uh, you know, better than pretty good to abysmal. Uh, and the problem with them uh, and, and about finding out about voting machines nowadays is uh, they change frequently. I think in the time that I have lived in Virginia in the last uh, 10, 15 years, there have been at least three different types of, of electronic voting machines we, we've used. Uh, first one was the punch card. The second one was the ballot marking, and the third one was the uh, uh, was the mark and scan. The other thing is that because they're locally purchased, <laughs> in other words, because each county purchases the machines, they differ from one county to another. So you could have a mark and scan machine made by one company in uh, one particular county, 
and you could have a ballot marking device in another county. And so the, uh, uh, the, the sometimes the uh, uh, ability to uh, and, and the uh, the security of the machines varied from county to county. Now in Virginia, we use mark and scan as they do in DC and and uh, in Maryland. A mark and scan machine, and those of you who voted in this area will know what it is. You have what looks sort of like a paper ballot, right? And you mark it fully. You color in the uh, 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 in the, uh, the little square for your preferred candidate. When you finish, you put it in a folder. You walk over to the scanning machine. You put it in the scanner. It scans. It spits you out a receipt saying that you voted. The advantage of that is, of course, the original ballot, the one that you marked, went into the machine and uh, could be checked if, uh, if needed. Now, uh, the ballot marking device is one where the voter goes into the voting booth and with a stylus or a finger, if their finger is something, marks the, the candidate of their choice. Then they record the vote. Sometimes you get a receipt, sometimes you don't, but you don't know, uh, you don't have a backup as to what, uh, uh, how you voted. So it's much harder to check those. Now, Georgia has been criticized because it had, has uh, uh, ballot marking devices. And, you know, I had to, um, um, you know, I, I read this, I read the, 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 there were some lawsuits involved, but recently I've been reading about, of course, the, uh, the recount that's going on in, uh, uh, in Georgia, and they are hand counting. And if it's a ballot marking device, you can't hand count. So what I've been able to ascertain is some of the machines are ballot marking, and some of them are mark and scan. The ones that are mark, mark and scan, they're hand counting those ballots. The ones that are ballot marking devices, those are, uh, um, those they, they have to essentially rely on the machine. So if you have a mark and scan system, you have to have the clear intention of the voter, right? You have to mark that, uh, that square and you have to mark it fully. And this becomes relevant and some of the criticisms uh, are not justifiable ones, I think, that have come up in this past uh, uh, election, but this is uh, one of the issues that, uh, uh, that has been raised about, uh, about the mark and scan system. And the ballot marking systems, again, are only as good as the software. So, in fact, uh, many years ago, not that many years ago, because nothing in this is many years ago, but uh, a few years ago, a professor at Michigan, uh, University of Michigan, decided to offer his students uh, a, a chance to test these uh, ballot marking systems. There was only one question on it. Uh, the question was, was a choice, which is the greatest university in the world, University of Michigan or Ohio State University? And all the students went in there and marked the, uh, uh, marked their choice. When they opened the machines and to go and, uh, and communicated the results and, and, uh, uh the results were, were, uh, uh, published. Ohio State is the greatest university in the world, won by a landslide. <laughs> and that was because the professor had fiddled with the software. After that, Michigan abandoned those types of, uh, of, of machines, mostly. Hey, Bruce. And, uh, excuse me? Uh, Bruce, we have a question, and I, sure. I don't know if you're going to get to it uh, in your next slide, but if, hopefully you don't mind me interrupting. No, no. The question is, why isn't there the same voting protocols across all states, including which companies uh, these states use? This is a very good question, and I will get to that. Yes, uh, thank you for raising it because it's a very important point. 
Thank you, Bruce. Okay, so, and again, as I mentioned before, the ballot marking system, you don't have the backup. Those of us who were around in the 2000 presidential election, remember the punch cards. Florida, the hanging chance. Yeah, you lined up the punch card with a, like a block or a, a, a frame. And then you punched the the the, uh, the 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 hole that was next to the, your preferred candidate. If it wasn't lined up correct, correctly, you voted for somebody else. If you didn't punch uh, hard enough, I guess it didn't get recorded, and that's where you came up with all the whole issues of you know with the, the photographs of people examining, looking through the ballots to see whether or not the punch card actually you know, they actually intended to vote for for uh, 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 for a particular candidate or not. Also, you know, what, every time you get people who are into, uh, um, uh, who, who get excited about uh, computers and electronics, uh, they, they start thinking about connections and, and trying to make things simpler and more efficient and how much they, you know, how much easier it would be if everything were interconnected, uh, things like that. Um, in fact, back when I was, this would have been 1990, ooh, 1996, uh, no, 98, I was at the Pentagon. And the, those of us who were uh, SESs uh, got uh, uh, Palm Pilots. And Palm Pilots were handheld, uh, uh, you know, they looked like uh, a modern cell phone, but they didn't have a cell, uh, a cell you know, a cell feature. They were just... Uh, 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 they, were, they were just devices that uh, uh, were you, you could use to um, uh, to pick up emails, but you had to connect them to your computer. And in fact, what you would do, uh, we would do, was you know when when we were going out of town, we connect these things up to the computer. The computer would download our our, our email onto the Palm Pilot. You go you go the uh, get on the plane. You'd uh, uh, answer the uh, emails on the plane, offline, because Lord knows planes didn't have Wi-Fi in those days. When you landed at the other airport, you went to a payphone. You took a cord out of your pocket. You connected the device up to you know, the payphone. You dialed the 800 number of the Pentagon server, and it uploaded all of your emails. The Navy decided that they were going to be on the cutting edge, and they gave uh, all of their SESs Palm 7s. Palm 7s were wireless communicators. You didn't need to connect them up physically to the computer. And so people were happily communicating, uh, you know, or, or using these devices uh, wirelessly. Problem was, as I pointed out, the uh, uh, these uh, communications were uh, essentially in the clear. They were analog, they were not digital, they were not encrypted. And uh, even though the material that was being sent might not have been classified, and we hope was not, uh, it certainly could be sensitive and could easily be intercepted by something like a scanner. So the Navy had to call all of their Palm 7s back in. Everybody had to turn them back in. But that's what happens when you get people who get too excited about uh, uh, about technology. They don't think it all the way through. And again, somebody, you know, as I said, some voting machines were connected to the internet, and some of them were even connected by Wi-Fi. All of those things caused uh, uh, many, many security problems and didn't fortunately last very long. So... All that being said, let's talk about one particular manufacturer of voting machines and the current election. So, let's see, hold on just a second. Oh, nope. Okay. Try to figure out how I can get back to where I was before. Ah, oh, yes, I can. Sorry. Okay. So, Dominion is a U.S.-based manufacturer of voting machines. And they make, they have, uh, uh, they in fact make both, uh, uh, they make both ballot marking machines, 
and they make uh, uh, scan uh, uh, market scan machines. So they had a couple of machines that had some issues. The votes in one county of Michigan were originally uh, given to uh, uh, to Joe Biden, and uh, not because of the machine. But because somebody communicated them, when they communicated them, they used they did they forgot to update the soft the communication software. Uh, so the names got uh, juxtaposed. The uh, uh, then in uh, Floyd County, Georgia, there was a similar communication problem regarding the number of votes for various candidates. In both cases, both cases the same thing. It was apparently not a uh, problem with the machine, but with the way that the votes were communicated. And the, they, were, they were corrected before they even became official, simply because of the fact that the votes didn't look right. And when you're dealing with precincts, and I've dealt with a lot of voting for many years, and I've dealt with uh, uh, in, in a number of states, and I've dealt with it with, with many precincts, and precincts are small, and the people who are the voting officials, the election officials there, know you. Or if they don't know you, they know where, where you live and what sort of place you live in, and that, uh, um, you know, and if something goes wrong or there's, a, uh, there's something that could uh, be voter fraud, they'll know immediately. Give you an example. I live in a golf course community here in, uh, uh, in Gainesville, Virginia. Now, uh, we are a 55 plus community. So that means in order to live there, you have to be over 55. Our precinct happens to be our clubhouse, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the clubhouse for the golf course. If somebody who was 23 years old came in to vote, at that precinct, they would immediately be uh, uh, questioned simply because 23-year-olds are not supposed to be voting in a precinct that uh, you know has only people over over 55 years old, and that's why uh, the, the idea is that a lot of voting fraud, voter fraud, can go go on without the uh, uh, the knowledge of uh, you know the people of, who are the voting. Uh, you know, who are the uh, uh, election officials is very wrong-headed because it just, uh, it's, it's really quite difficult to do. So another one of the controversies, again, connected with, uh, with Dominion, was that uh, it has been alleged that 941,000 votes for Donald Trump, it's an interesting number, I don't know why this was chosen, uh, were allegedly deleted in Pennsylvania by voting machines. Well, interestingly, there are, um, Dominion has voting machines in only 14 of the Pennsylvania counties. That amounted to 1.3 million votes. 52% of those votes went to Trump for a total of 676,000. If there had been 941,000 Trump votes that were deleted in the state of Pennsylvania as a result of these machines, that would be more votes than the total number of votes that could have been recorded on the machines that uh, uh, that Dominion has in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania by about to three point one million. I'm sorry, uh, by about three hundred, three hundred thousand, three hundred twenty thousand votes. So that's a little unlikely. The other thing, which is really one of my favorites uh, that I've heard, is called Sharpie Gate, uh, and that is an accusation by the Republican Party that for, for marking the uh, mark and scan ballots, Republican voters and only Republican voters were handed Sharpies 
which the scanners could not pick up. According to what I could not record, therefore, there would be a, uh, um, a number of votes that didn't get recorded for for the uh, uh, for presumably here because it's the Republicans have made the accusation for the Republican candidate. But think about that: if the votes didn't get recorded, when you walk in to the voting uh, to the polling place, they check off your name as coming to vote. If your vote hasn't been recorded because you were given the wrong pen, then all of a sudden you have huge numbers of votes that don't get recorded. And that would certainly raise a red flag. You know, voters came in, they didn't vote essentially, which would make not a lot of sense. And then as soon as they got the, uh, the results, um, they would they would know that there was something wrong. In addition, which is really simple, uh, Dominion says we love sharpies. Sharpies are the preferred uh, uh, writing utensil of choice because they have quick drying ink, they don't smear, and they're very dark. They get scanned very easily. So what you're having here is somebody has grabbed on to what, uh, uh, you know, you know to one issue, and then they just snowballed, and we all know how the internet works. It's been, people have been, uh, uh, you know, have been uh, uh, adding to it. There have also been uh, alleged problems with Dominion voting machines overseas. But nobody has come up with any evidence to say either A, what those uh, uh, those problems were, and B, whether the machines are the same as the machines here, and C, whether or not that has anything to do with the, with uh, uh, the problems that uh, they alleged occurred they alleged occurred in uh, uh, in the United States. But here's the problem, of course, once you start getting into something where there is uh, where it's electronic and you can't necessarily hold it in your hand, like a piece of paper or a piece of or a paper ballot, then it's easy to create rumors. And when an election is as close as this one is, uh, uh, all sorts of rumors fly. This is really the summary of the Election Infrastructure Government Coordinating Council Executive Committee, which is made up of both members of the Department of Homeland Security and various uh, election uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and good government groups. And I will, and I will read it just to, to, make, to make the point. There is no evidence that any voting system de deleted or lost votes, changed votes, or was any way compromised. Uh, and that statement came out five days ago. I would think that that pretty much summarizes that, that whole issue, at least with regard to the current election. So <clears throat> how do we stop these kinds of these rumors? Well, you never stop the rumors, right? I mean, there are all sorts of rumors uh, uh, that have come in. You know, the person in Georgia who allegedly voted after he was dead, and then it turned out it was his wife who, uh, who uh, uh, because she had the same name, she was Mrs. His Name, uh, a, uh, a bit old fashioned, but certainly not illegal. Uh, it got recorded as his vote. So, uh, you know, they have been, so that one didn't get uh, yeah. the number of votes that they are talking about that seem to be uh, are there any way questioned um, are probably about three dozen. There were 140 million votes cast in the presidential election. I can't even tell you uh, what percentage uh, a few dozen would be of all those uh, of those votes. Uh, the, the total totality of uh, uh, the corpus of, uh, of, of voters. Um, Bruce? Yeah. Uh, another question for you has come up. Yeah. How, how can they already come out with that, with a statement of a winner 
seeming that as votes are still being counted. They didn't come up with a statement of a winner. They said that there was there has been no evidence that there has been any tampering with machines. Okay. If they're, if they're talking about how they can, uh, uh, you know, if, if they're talking, if you're talking about the political side, that's easy. If you have, uh, uh, let's assume, for for example, you have uh, uh, a uh, a candidate who has uh, one uh, a million votes, and you have his opponent who has nine hundred thousand votes. The votes left to be counted are fifty thousand. I think you can pretty easily make a prediction as to which one's going to win, even though you still got to count those fifty thousand votes. Sorry, uh, I misspoke. Um, she meant to say uh, that there was no. F um, why isn't? Uh, hold up here. I got lost. <laughs> how, they, okay. how can they come out with a statement that there is no fraud, seemingly as votes are being counted? Well, again, this is uh, this just said that no voting system has deleted or lost votes changed votes or were in any way compromised. You know, they haven't said that there, there wasn't there wasn't any kind of other fraud, but they are uh, uh, but what they are saying is that at least the, the voting machine systems, and when they talk about voting systems, they're referring to the machines. Um, they're saying that uh, uh, that the, the machines did not uh, act badly. Whether or not you have uh, you have issues like the other ones that have been alleged of dead people voting or uh, you know people talking too loudly. I think that was one of the uh, uh, the, the uh, or not enough. The, the observers were not close enough to the people who are counting. That's a different issue entirely, and the and the, uh, 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 the executive committee didn't address that. So the uh, the solutions, of course, is you have paper backups. Use the machines like the uh, uh, the machines like like the mark and scans. Those have uh, you know have the non electronic record. Those things are checked. They can be kept forever if you want to, and you can uh, uh, you can you you know what they what those say. If you insist on using a machine that doesn't necessarily have a backup, why you would want to, I am not sure. Maybe they don't have the room, I don't know. Uh, do what Iowa does, which is tell the, tell the hackers that here are the, here are the, uh, um, uh, the machines that we're going to use. And we invite you to try to hack them and let us know if there are any problems. And then they fix the bugs or find another machine. Uh, the other way, of course, is, is the, the competition they had at DEF CON, uh, you know, which is the hacker conference in Las Vegas held every year, where they have a room of voting machines and they would, uh, uh, they would test them to determine whether or not uh, they could be hacked. Um, and uh, that, uh, that clearly... Uh, um, identifies any issues in voting machines. Now, well, a couple of years ago, a few years, maybe three, four years ago, they had, uh, uh, they had a bunch of new machines that, uh, that were being tested at DEF CON. And the hackers were able to hack into every single system that were, was in use in, in uh, various uh, uh, counties across the country, except for one. And that was the one in my home county, of Cook County, Illinois. And the reason they couldn't hack it apparently was because the, the system was based on eight track tapes. And none of the hackers knew, knew anything about how to deal with eight track tapes. So let's shift gears now. Let's talk about uh, website hacking. An election, of course, yeah, this is, this is pre-election, of course. Uh, but it also could be it also could be post election. Um, in the modern age, everybody's got to have a website. Uh, if you want to get the word out about your platform, uh, if about your your policy positions, the best place to put them is on a website. Yes, you can uh, you can go around the country and you can talk about your positions uh, and your proposals, 
But, you know, a lot of, a lot of times that is subject to uh, uh, miscommunication, uh, spinning, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, quoting out of context, alteration. So you put it on your website. Well, the website is like a candidate's website is like everybody else's website. You know, it's not necessarily uh, uh, particularly, uh, it, it's, it, it, it might not be particularly secure. And, uh, you know, you could do a, a DDoS attack on it. Uh, you could do a, uh, uh, you could deface the site. It doesn't necessarily change much, but it does embarrass the candidate. Or you could even alter, alter the content. You could put a not in somewhere or take a not out. I do not support becomes I support. Um, and uh, a reasonably sophisticated hacker could do that. So let's go back to uh, War Story. Uh, let's go back to 2008, the election, presidential election of 2008. The FBI came to the uh, uh, Obama campaign and said, the Chinese have managed to hack into your, the, uh, uh, your, your uh, uh, servers that you have uh, your election materials on. Uh, and uh, we suggest that you harden the, the, the server and you put uh, uh, you know, new security measures to it. And uh, the, uh, um, the person who was, uh, uh, who, who was the cybersecurity guy for the Obama campaign did just that. But he went a step further. After the election, during the transmission, uh, during the transition, sorry, uh, he gave all of the people on the transition, uh, the transition team, absolutely clean MacBook computers. All those computers could do was to connect up to the transition server. So you could get documents from the server and you could work on those documents. And uh, uh, so it wasn't 24 hours before some 20 year old uh, transition, uh, uh, transition worker called up, uh, called up the, uh, uh, the head of the team and said, Hey, Dick, I'm in a Starbucks. And this damn machine won't let me get to the uh, uh, won't let me get to my email. And, and his comment uh, comment later was, "You think that if you were working on the transition for the most powerful office in the uh, in the entire world, you wouldn't do it from a Starbucks." <laughs> so the other thing is, uh, excuse me, did, did you say something, Dale? No? Yep, got another question for you. Uh, sure. One of our attendees that, that she read that electronic votes were routed to Germany by Dominion prior to being calculated. She also read the key states stopped counting votes for four hours through the night all at the same time. Why do you think this all happened? Thank you. <laughs> uh, because it's, uh, it's not true. There was no evidence that that key states didn't that key states stopped uh, uh, start, started you know, stop counting for four hours. Don't you think the television networks would have noticed that and made a comment? Um, in addition, there uh, uh, there was uh, there was been no evidence whatsoever that anything was sent to Germany, uh, you know, and back again. That was a new one on me. That one I hadn't heard. Um, okay, so uh, the other one, of course, is is uh, social media attacks, and we've seen it all with Twitter and Facebook accounts. Uh, you know, thousands of these accounts have been set up by uh, uh, mostly uh, uh, by foreigners, uh, not entirely, but but uh, uh, usually are foreigners, and they spread misinformation. Um, this kind of thing has been going on for a long time. You know, the Russians have been doing it since the days of the Tsar. They haven't necessarily been doing it with Twitter and Facebook, but they've uh, they've been out doing disinformation for a long, long time. And they, you know, they're always uh, uh, eager to find a new mode of communication. Uh, and Twitter and Facebook and some of the other uh, 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 some of the other online trolls, the online uh, uh, 
like the, the discussion groups and the listservs are, are very popular with the Russians. You can always tell uh, a, a Russian there are uh, uh, there are two there are really two ways. One is the grammar is the English grammar is a little bit off. It's either too formal or it's uh, they, they are, there are little mistakes that somebody who hasn't grown up in the United States you know, wouldn't know. The other thing is that they love to use questions that we used to call in my logic class, uh, begging the question, you know, where in order to answer the question, you have to accept the first part. So for example, um, you know, since, uh, since it is clear that Joe Biden is senile, why is it that anyone can support his, uh, his position on such and such? Well, if you answer the question, you got to accept the first part of it, you know, and those are, that's very common with, uh, uh, with, with Russian, uh, Russian trolls. And in my, in my various discussion groups, we recognize them pretty quickly and, uh, and out them, you know, um, you know, we, we greet them, we greet them as comrade and then they disappear. Also, email is electronic, of course, um, and that's why I include it. But we've been using the, you know, the, this kind of thing for a long time. If you, you know, I, I remember it was it was not uh, uh, back. Oh, let's see, this would have been in the uh, 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 would have been in uh, in two thousand eight. Emails were going out saying uh, to people, uh, you know, you know, giving them the wrong date for the election. Uh, there was a particularly good one this this last time where people were being called, voters were potential voters were being called or emailed, and it was they were said, you know, the state has determined that because of COVID, uh, the election uh, on, a, uh, on the election day, it's going to be really crowded because we have to have uh, 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 a separation between people on social distancing. So if you want to get a chance of, uh, of, of you know, without waiting in line for, go on Wednesday. Um, there was one in, uh, in Maryland for a local election where uh, there were, uh, these were mostly telephone calls, verbal calls that said, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to one candidate supporters, you know, you can relax. He's won. Uh, don't worry about voting. Uh, they caught those guys, and uh, they went. Uh, I think they went to jail. So, those are pre and, and during the election attacks. In during the post election, the, you, we're seeing a whole lot of it. Stories about votes being sent to Germany. Uh, stories about, uh, 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 well, all these people who don't live in, uh, uh, who don't live in Nevada, uh, who have voted. Well, you know, uh, they don't forgot to tell you the part that most of those are military, uh, and, and are voting absentee. Um, there are, uh, uh, you know, there are changes, uh, you know, the, the, you know, Photographs are, 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 are changed. Um, the uh, um, all sorts of uh, uh, you know all sorts of manipulation is being done, and it's not so much to try to change the result of the election. It's the uh, the object is to make sure that people don't trust the system, and if you don't trust the system, why bother to vote? We had the largest turnout of voters in this past presidential election that we had since at least 1908, which was the election of uh, William Howard Taft. And the uh, uh, and it, it may well exceed that. I don't know what it was the largest number before then was. I'll have to look that one up. But uh, um, that's a lot of voters. If they feel that the system is not uh, uh, is, is not uh, secure or safe uh, or it's being manipulated, they're just not going to bother. So, 
How serious is this problem? <clears throat> well, certainly the problem of the social media is serious. Um, certainly problem, uh, uh, you know, uh, the voting machines, you know, when I started doing this research, I thought there were a lot, a lot of problems with voting machines. And the, uh, um, as I get more and more and work more and more in there, I, you know, they seem to be fewer and fewer that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, that, that appeared. Now, I still believe that some are better than others. I still believe that there are a, uh, um, there, I still believe that, uh, that there, there are problems. There are communications problems that it can occur. Uh, and no matter how good the technology, the hackers are going to continue to try to get into the systems. Now, there's a, there's a real partisan difference here. And I'm not, when I mean partisan, that's probably the wrong term. There's a political philosophical difference. Right now, voting machines are purchased at the county level, sometimes at the state level. And in fact, in Virginia, when Governor McAuliffe decided that we were all going to switch from the, uh, 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 the, 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 uh, the insecure machines they had before to the mark and scan machines, um, he told the counties, you can keep your old machines if you want, or you can buy whatever machine that you want, but we will not give you money from the state to buy machines unless they are this type. And the position has always been, it's a federalism position. The Republicans um, believe that the states should have the authority on, uh, the, uh, on, on all elections. They point out that the Constitution, when it talks about elections, talks about the states. It does not talk about a federally run election. The counties also point out, and the states point out, as I mentioned at the very beginning, that you may every four years vote on three offices for the federal, at the federal level, president, senator, and representative uh, to the House of Representatives. You may also have one or two, uh, one or two other uh, 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 not offices, but uh, uh, constitutional amendments for the state or whatever. When the time comes for a state election, you have tens, you, know, you, have, you have dozens sometimes of offices that you vote for. And the counties and the states take the position uh, that these, you know, we have more elections and we have more offices than you do. This is, should be our responsibility to control ourselves. Now, Congress has indeed appropriated money to deal with the issue, but it's mostly for research and for advice, not enough to actually fix machines or to buy new ones. So we get back to the question that was given by, uh, 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 by a member of the audience. Should there be a single voting system in this country? I would say yes, because it's a logical approach. Uh, you got fewer problems. If you do develop problems, then if it's the same machine across the country, then the problem is likely to be with all the machines that can be fixed countrywide. And in addition, uh, yeah, but, but as I said before, even the federal elections, as we know, are run by state and counties. But really, to a very, to, to certain groups in this country, the ambiguity has its advantages. If everything were secure, you couldn't talk about the, the, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the all of these problems. You couldn't, you know, and, and take uh, uh, a half dozen or a dozen minor issues and blow it up into a million votes. So 
a uh, uh, so to these people, a secure election system is not an ideal election system. The same people who talked about the voting machine also made another statement. The November 23rd election was the most secure in American history. And I went and looked at their site and they said it had the fewest problems with a hundred, with, with, uh, uh, you know, uh, nearly 150 million votes cast. There were, uh, you know, there were a, a, a minuscule number of problems. So, uh, in, uh, uh, in closing, I would say, yeah, there are potential issues. Um, and certain people like to exploit those potential issues and make up new ones. Uh, there are improvements that can be made. Uh, there is still old fashioned fraud that takes place, but not much. And in generally speaking, uh, it's, uh, uh, at least as demonstrated by this past election, uh, regardless of what certain people will tell you, it was a pretty secure election. So if I haven't answered any, if I haven't answered all the questions that have come up, I'm happy to answer any others. Um, Bruce, we got two statements, uh, that, two statements. Are, okay. <laughs> that are in the chat that, uh, people are looking for your uh, comments on. Okay. Uh, the first one is, while you were doing your presentation, President Trump has uh, fired Christopher Krebs, who was uh, the person in charge of election security. Surprise, surprise. If I made a statement like that uh, that was inimical to uh, uh, you know, the position of the president, I, I'd uh, get fired too. <laughs> and then the other one uh, was that this morning uh, or earlier today during hearings, Dominion said that China made parts of the uh, uh, programs that did the counting. Any th thoughts on that? Uh, humans where? Uh, does not say in the statement, I assume, on Capitol Hill. I don't remember, Dominion, I don't remember Dominion being called uh, in front of uh, in Capitol Hill uh, uh, to, uh, to to make a, uh, uh, you know, to, to talk about things. Yeah, and... Uh, it, it, it's entirely possible that uh, uh, that parts were made in China. Parts of lots of things are made in China. Unless you can, uh, parts of the computer that I'm talking on right now are made in China. Um, and I got I got a, a Dell, I guess. Um, if uh, but the, but the issue is you have to have a connection here. I mean, you can say that. Uh, uh, you know, you can say, you know, parts of them were made, uh, 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 you know, in, in, uh, uh, you know, in any part of the world, unless you can connect and say, you know, and make a, uh, uh, a logical connection between that fact and your conclusion, then you're missing a, uh, uh, a, 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 a major part of the syllogism. Thank you. Uh, I believe that's all the written questions we have submitted. If anyone else has a question, you can either uh, put it in the chat box or uh, raise your hand and we can unmute your mic. Um, we do have one question that just came in uh, asking, saying that this might be naive, but why has the government not involved big tech corporations to develop more secure safety measures to protect against election fraud. Um, don't these companies supposedly have the power, the most powerful technology innovation capabilities in the world? Well, one problem, of course, is what referred to as big tech. And if you're referring to Microsoft, Google, uh, uh, and some of the, uh, some of those organizations, they're not particularly in favor with the, uh, with the, the, uh, uh, current administration, uh, and uh, they they might not. Uh, that may be one reason. Uh, the second reason is, you know, I would be. Um, I'm I'm not. Uh, let's take Dominion for example. I'm not a. Uh, uh, I'm not an expert on on their their machines. Um, but it's nine o'clock. 
statute that they, uh, they, those things to undergo a lot of testing and not only testing internally, but unless they are very, very foolish, those things are, t are tested outside. And those are, pro those are tested probably by the same types of, uh, of organizations uh, or ones connected with them that uh, are represented by big tech. Are there any other questions from any of our attendees? Any, anybody else? Feel free uh, to... One just came up in Q&A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, it says the states have the right to collect votes as opposed to a large national voting system. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. And then we have another question over there in chat, Donald. <laughs> Can a political party block temporarily a certification in a state or county? They just did it in Michigan, in Wayne County, Michigan. They, uh, it's uh, the, uh, uh, the certification of the results in Wayne County, Michigan, which uh, includes Detroit, uh, was temporarily blocked by the, uh, 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 by the Republican uh, members of the election board, which means that it's going to have to go to the state board of election. Bruce, when you were mentioning uh, big company, big tech companies earlier, um, could we also point to the problems that banks or even large companies like Target or universities have with hackers and uh, as being just problems that any company that's online would have? Um, in, in anything is online, and, and that's, of course, what, that's, of course, one of the things I teach. Uh, and... Uh, uh, you know, because because there are you know maybe not millions but certainly thousands of hackers out there who you know spend a lot of time to, to doing nothing but trying to attack these uh, uh, these large organizations and organizations are made up of people I mean 85 percent or more of successful attacks on uh, uh, on networks and computer systems are a result of a failure not of technology, but of policy and people. Uh, another uh, long one has come in. Can you elaborate on the finance element behind ensuring election integrity? You mentioned in your presentation that Congress gets some funds towards polling machines in 2020, but not enough. How could the government better manage its finances, to better invest in successful anti-fraud measures? Samuel, well, that's, that's, not, yeah, that's not exactly what I said. It's not that the money didn't go to voting machines. That's the problem. The money for the government, at least from the federal government, money appropriated by Congress went to, uh, uh, went to set up research and uh, offer uh, counties and states advice on their machines. Uh, that's all the money went for. And that's the philosophical problem. The Democrats would like to have more money so that they could, if nothing else, they could have people go in and check the machines, uh, or even you know, move towards a, uh, a universal machine. Uh, which would cost a great deal of money, but the Republicans don't want that because that's a that's a, a difference in political philosophy. So it's not a what can Congress do a better job. It's um, well, you got to have one party dominate the Congress before you're going to get you know going to get that kind of change. We have one more question from Dr. Paula O'Callaghan. I'm going, to Hello, unmute, Paula. I'm going to unmute your phone. Go ahead, Paula. Oh, hello, Bruce. Um, Hi, Paula. So, I mean, it almost sounds like you're advocating for lower tech is greater trust. Maybe we should go back to mechanical voting. <laughs> you got to make a trade off. Mechanical voting had its own share of problems. It was slower. It did have its uh, uh, have it did it did have its it, its uh, uh, share of, of, of errors, 
uh, as I have pointed out. Uh, it was subject to, uh, to, to corruption. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, there is, uh, um, uh, you know, there's something to be said for it. You know, one of my, uh, when I previously gave this uh, talk, somebody said, well, what you're really talking about is a low tech backup to a high tech, uh, 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 to a high tech device. And that's probably right. You have the, you have the high tech device, which is the ballast scanning, the uh, mark and scan machine, but you have actually have the, uh, the, the actual, uh, um, uh, you, you actually have the, uh, the, the ballot that was marked that it can be, that can be checked. Yep. That's what I thought I heard you saying. Thank you. Okay. And we have another question from one of my students, okay. Samuel Song. Go ahead, Sam. You're now unmuted, Sam. Hey there. No, I didn't have anything to say, but uh, thanks. Yeah, I already asked all of them. Okay, okay good. Okay, great. All right, so any other questions or shall we say thank you and good night? Any questions from Don't anybody? Don't forget about tomorrow night. Right, thank you, Donald. So tomorrow night we have um, Dr. Joe Honer will be talking about ways to become an FBI investigator. He himself was an FBI investigator, or I should say a forensic accountant, and he's moved on to starting his own consulting firm. So that's tomorrow, but Let's take one more moment and please give um, Dr. Bruce DeGrazia a big round of applause. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> Fabulous. Electronic popping. <laughs> Thank you all for letting me uh, give the presentation. Appreciate it. Thank you. It was fabulous. All right. Thank you, Bruce. Good to see you. Good night, everybody. Hope to see you tomorrow night. Oh, wait. You know what? what? Um, oh, Sam, go ahead. I, I, I know I just said I'm done, but what, okay, what I'm courses here. do you teach, uh, Dr. Uh, DeGrazia? I teach uh, uh, the graduate program uh, in management, uh, cybersecurity management and policy. Okay. I took um, foundations of information security. I, I don't know if that's uh, uh, related at all to your work, but I, I, I took it this past semester and it was a, it was a good experience. Maybe Excellent. Well, I'm glad you, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Take more <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Sam. All right. Good night, everybody. And thank you again, Bruce. Bye-bye.